It might be that a year earlier, you know, they already had a good understanding that this was possible, but they needed a hundred times as many computers, but now they have a hundred times as many computers. They have like way more data center than they had, than they had when they started. And maybe that was the whole limiter, right? Maybe they were waiting for Dojo to get up to speed or to get those 10,000 H100s or, you know, whatever, put them over the threshold. But, uh, but now they've got it. It seems, you know, that's, that's how they're representing it to us. And it seems like they've basically got it working. And so, you know, in a sense, they got to where they had intended going for a long time, but it felt like for a while there, like, you know, you know, at what point are they going to be able, they're going to have the right mix of all the ingredients as an organization to be able to actually do the step over to that thing. It wasn't really clear, but it, it seems like it's worked out at this point now. And I'm super um, optimistic about the next couple of years. Can you comment real briefly since, you know, we've talked a lot about NVIDIA and just the state of neural net hardware. Um, we were really talking about it in the context of what runs in the car. So the inference hardware, but you know, a lot of the same comments also apply to the data center, the supercomputers, the training. Um, and, you know, I, I don't have a way to confirm this, but from sources that I've spoken to well more than half of Tesla's capacity right now to do training is NVIDIA based. It's, uh, I think the, the 10,000, uh, H100s that we know about, plus some more that they haven't made an official announcement about, um, you know, plus all the A100s that they had originally, and that that number really, you know, far exceeds what they have for Dojo. Um, and, but they seem to be to a point where they are not compute constrained anymore. What do you, is your assessment of where Dojo is at in comparison to, you know, keeping up with what NVIDIA is able to do? Um, the H200 is coming out and it seems like NVIDIA is just firing on all cylinders as far as being able to continue to provide those massive accelerations in uh, their data center capabilities. Uh, so is, is Dojo going to play a meaningful role moving forward or is it just an insurance policy? How are you thinking about that? Uh, it is an insurance policy because you don't know what the future holds. And uh... I mean, it, it's an insurance policy on multiple levels. Uh, being, you know, Tesla as an AI company is critically dependent on compute. And they don't, if they don't make their own, if they're dependent on a single vendor or two vendors and they're operating in a supply shortage, that's where we are right now. Like there's a supply shortage on GPUs that could persist for quite a while. I, you know, I, I personally, I think one of the reasons why we don't hear Tesla talk about Dojo very much right now is they very much want to stay in NVIDIA's good graces, right? And NVIDIA is trading at a very frothy multiple. It's uh, 76 I checked this morning. So it's like 3x the PE multiple that other, you know, companies of its ilk are trading at. Uh, and a significant chunk of that multiple sits on their, you know, they've got 85%. They've got crazy, crazy high uh, gross margins on their hardware right now. And you get that kind of, you get those kind of, of things when you've got a monopoly or an oligopoly, whether it's transient or permanent, right? Uh, and, you know, mono oligopoly is like nothing less than competition, <laughs> right? So I think even though like I, I don't really see uh, Dojo as like uh, a data center competitor to NVIDIA in quite the way that people are apt to interpret it as, as uh, I mean, it's not like there's no world in which that's ever a possibility. It's just not, you know, Tesla's not in that space right now. They're not quickly going to be able to move into that space, right? Um, for reasons that have to do with like Nvidia, they didn't start this yesterday. Like they've been in this business for a long time. They've they're, they've got enormous investments in their business relationships, in all the different platforms they make, in all the different kinds of things. Because you know the data center business is not monolithic. There's like ten thousand different businesses with all these specializations that that you get into. You have to have all these different people who develop domain expertise in all those areas, tailor all your products. So like that doesn't happen overnight. Like even if Tesla wanted to do that, that would be, that's a 10, 20 year project to be able to do that kind of stuff. So, so the, the, you know, the kind of 
the tendency to view Tesla as an NVIDIA competitor, I think that's kind of misplaced right now. It's a simple story. And, you know, people who love horse races, they like doing that kind of stuff. But I don't think it's there. I don't think I don't actually think that's even a good business for Tesla, honestly, um, considering all the stuff it's got on its plate right now. Um, that said, I think Doge is a really great architecture for doing neural networks. I think it's much better fundamentally, right, than GPUs are for doing that. Now, this this whole this conversation gets complicated really quickly because there's lots of different ways to do neural networks. There's lots of people who want to do them for different reasons. There's inference, there's training, there's, you know, a different, you know, how big a network that you're training and your requirement for energy efficiency versus all different kinds of things, the footprint you want in your data center. These are very, very complicated trade-offs to determine like which of these is better in any particular place. But a thing that is true about neural networks that we train right now is they have big honking matrices. And <laughs> like you've got these matrices, which are thousand by thousand by thousand by thousand, you know, in uh, of numbers and you multiply it by another one. And so if, if my multiplier is 10 by 10 by 10, I have to break that matrix up into zillions and zillions of pieces and iterative, iteratively run this. And this is the way you do it on a GPU. Like most, of the granular processors that we have today that do this kind of basic operation, they have lots of small processors with lots of small multipliers. And the reason that you do that is it's very flexible. If the matrix sizes for the popular neural networks change dramatically over two or three or four years, your processor is still relevant. You don't have to redesign it. It's not fundamentally as well suited to the problem, but it's flexible. So you're willing to take that overhead because it reduces your risk. That's not what Dojo does. Dojo is like big, 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 enormous honking matrices. Like it's really optimized for that. It's going to be really fast at that. Okay, so most of the places that neural networks are likely to go, that's a really good fit for them. So it's got this this qualitative characteristic in the way that it's built to do things, which is a big win for the problem as we understand it today. Now, it's got a bunch of weaknesses. This is really, really different. Like almost all the software out there that does neural networks, it's written for doing things the GPU way, because GPUs is what we got. <laughs> it's what we've had for the last 10 years. We've got all these different kinds. My laptop, it runs neural networks on GPUs, right? You know, we do GPU code, that's how we do it. So if you want to do it a different way, you have to rewrite all that stuff. And believe me, there's a massive amount of infrastructure code out there, which has been tailored. So like NVIDIA could end up, even if you don't have the optimal hardware platform, you can win just because you got the software that works. And it's a, and it's a, it's a mammoth undertaking. And, you know, NVIDIA is not standing still, you know, the field moves forward and they move forward. So anybody that comes into the field, they don't have to just get to where NVIDIA is today. They have to get to where NVIDIA is going to be when they, you know, at the point that they're competing. So there's a, a huge handicap. Now, if you're developing this stuff entirely internal, so like one of the reasons that Tesla can do Dojo, and it doesn't make sense for a lot of other players to do this kind of stuff, is Tesla has this huge internal load, which is basically two or three highly specialized jobs that account for, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70% of all their compute, right? So instead of them having like, you know, NVIDIA has got like literally tens of thousands of applications that have been ported to their platform. So if you, if you want to, you know, compete against NVIDIA, you, you know, this is the problem AMD has right now and where AMD is suffering. You know, they, they, they have to pick and choose the few things that they're going to get to run well on their platform right now while they try to get their MI300 into the same space. They just, that's they, a huge disadvantage. And if you wanted to take Dojo and do that, you'd have the same problem, right? It's a, you have this huge software problem of, of catching up to that kind of stuff. On the other hand, if you've got five jobs, you know, and they account for a huge amount of, of the economic value of the reason that you're, that you're getting the system and you can port those and you know how big that is. Now you have a rationale for doing it, right? So, so yeah, Dojo, so it's an insurance policy against the possibility that, um, that uh, well, it's a strategic, you're not dependent on one vendor. Even if you are dependent on one vendor, if you have an alternative, it de-risks what you're doing. It also gives you a negotiating tool again. Like right now, nobody's in a good negotiating position against NVIDIA, right? Because there just aren't any alternatives, but that's not the normal state of things. And it probably won't persist. At some point, it'll be an advantage to have an alternative 
right? To help you get better pricing or negotiate, you know, uh, for the thing. And then there's the fact that it is actually potentially a viable alternative for this kind of stuff. And for the jobs that do get ported to Dojo, I think that it will probably be more performant than running that same job on a GPU cluster, right? It's just, they've got to invest a lot of time and money into getting those jobs. Uh, first of all, you got to develop Dojo and Devo Dojo is not easy. I mean, there's a lot, we talk a lot about the Silicon, right? That's the easy thing. They trot out the chip, they show us the wafer. There's some cool stuff that, you know, 25 D1 die on wafer on chip on substrate, uh, like that's all super cool. And the, you know, the, the stuff that they do at the system level, that's really cool. I used to design interconnect. They have 192 gigabit <laughs> serial interconnect, like surdies on the edge of these puppies. And I, I would like to know like, what is taking 192 gigabit per second data streams, many of them off of the edge of this chip. Now, for the chips that are just talking to each other on the die, you can just plug them into each other. You don't even need retimers or anything like that. But if you're going to go off of the, one of those tiles to another one, there's some magic stuff <laughs> that you're doing to hop to the to the next tile, to the next tray, into the next cabinet. Like there's some magic going in there, and there was nothing said about that, right? So there's there's some my guess. I think there's some secret sauce that they're not talking about at all, which is a totally critical component of this. And it's really hard to evaluate Dojo in, you know, when in my mind, there's this black hole of, I mean, if that, if that interconnect that they're using between cabinets at that data rate, if it's rock solid and it's cost effective, great. Everything's good. Right. But as an interconnect guy, I look at that and it's like my worst nightmare for trying, you know, I, I, it, it's just like, it's an unbelievably hard technical problem to move that much data across a physical medium, you know, a cable uh, between, a, between a couple of trays. This, this is not 192 gigabits. There's like a whole row of these 192 gigabit things just like feeding off the edge of this tray to the next one. It's nuts. It's an insane amount of bandwidth. So, uh, so Dojo is a really hard problem, just fundamentally to get it working. And even once you get it working, because it's a completely novel architecture, not only do you have to like port all your stuff to these, you know, new, new cutting routine, but you have to figure out how you're going to map your problems. I mean, we've, the problem of how to map a neural network onto the, you know, the infrastructure that a GPU provides or a cluster of GPUs in a data center, that problem has been studied to death. Like it's, been very well characterized and how you go about doing it. Like it's, it's still pretty magic. There aren't a lot of people who can do it, right? Like these are, it, if, if you know how to do it, you're worth $5 million a year. Like you, you can write your own, you know, because there are very few people who can do it and it's a super valuable capability. So, you know, don't want to minimize that. Flip side is, you know, Dojo, they have to do that stuff from scratch on a whole new fabric, a whole new set of infrastructure, right? That that's an even harder problem. There are even fewer people that can do it. It's a really big investment. So like none of it would make any sense if your goal was to build Dojo and then go compete against NVIDIA because the hurdle is just really, really, it's like, you know, landing rocket ships and putting 40,000 <laughs> satellites in orbit so that we can, uh, you know, uh, have cell phone coverage all everywhere on earth. Like it's a really, really big problem on that kind of scale. But if you just have a couple of jobs and those jobs are worth like $10 billion to you, you can justify spending a couple billion dollars to have a good insurance policy to get that thing to run. And, and I do think Dojo, like fundamentally, it's an insurance policy. It could turn out, you know, you could think of it as an annuity. It might pay dividends, <laughs> you know, they might get something really great out of it. And, uh, and I think there's plenty of potential there. Like as looking at the architecture, I'm inspired by it. I think it's, a, it, I'm really happy that somebody because very few people are really coming up with innovative architectures to really go at neural networks at scale. And like Doja is like the only good example I can really think of of, of somebody doing that. And, and I don't think we're gonna hear anything about Dojo because I think nobody wants to piss off NVIDIA right now. And there's, no, able... there's no upside to Tesla for talking about this publicly, right? Right, yeah. To, to me, I mean, I don't know if, if, if you think this is like a right way of thinking about it, but this is like a super simple, simpleton way of thinking about it. But Hardware 3 didn't really start singing until five years after its creation, once Tesla has figured out how to optimize that chip for its use case. Do you think 
dojo could have the same thing where it just like people haven't figured out how to make this thing sing yet like they haven't figured out how to put it to work is that what you, what you mean by insurance policy i just want to well, make sure I, so yeah it is the case a year maybe more than a year ago elon commented that they had production jobs running on dojo so they have dojo we don't know what the scale is and we don't know what jobs they're running on it um it seems like the auto labeler was the thing that they, so I don't, if you think back to the last AI day, which is a while back now, like auto labeler, it was like 40% of their total compute load at the time. Right. So like if you, if, if you get the auto labeler running on Dojo, you know, that, that takes 40% of everything, which is this one job and you can migrate it over to this platform and get it running. And, uh, you know, I think the auto labeler is probably still part of the stack, even with V12. I mean, they haven't told us what the V12 architecture stack is. Like I have my best guess about how it is and my best guess, the auto labeler is still playing a role because I think a lot of the perception architecture from V11 migrated to V12 using the uh, supervised, the auto labeler creates the labels for supervised training data for the perception stack. That's what it was doing before. I think there's, you know, supervised data is a beautiful thing. It's way more efficient than self-supervised or unsupervised in terms of the amount of training data that you need to get to a certain performance level. I think it'd be silly for them to not keep using it. They've got all the infrastructure. They've got all this data. They've got this auto labeler. It was already working great. They can keep using, keep expanding the auto labeler, and maybe it's running. Maybe that's what's running on Dojo. Maybe the other thing is that you know they told us uh, more than a year ago that there's the second generation Dojo. Like the, you know they, um, so there's a D2 chip, and the, the cabinets that I mean we've seen photos of Dojo cabinets, and they're very different from the ones that that we saw on AI Day. So I think all the indication is that that they continue to work on that platform. They may have already deployed a second generation into production. They may be using it. That Maybe that's what dealt with their, maybe that's what got them over the hump in terms of their compute, right? That's, that's one thing, like if you have, you know, if the part of the video processing that you're using for doing the, you know, human mimicking, you have to pre-process all these clips to extract what you want, the characteristics that, you, that you're going to, to uh, use for the objective function, the, the thing that you're trying to optimize. You have to be able to extract all that stuff from the data. You also have to be able to evaluate all these video clips that you're getting from the field, right? To see if they do stuff. You might be running A-B tests, including, not including them to see how they change the behavior. Super compute intensive stuff. Uh, and so like, you know, if Dojo works for that and they're migrating it over to Dojo, then maybe bringing up four more Dojo, you know, a Dojo box, the the first version they told us about, and the only one we have specs on, it's an exaflop per 10 cabinets, right? Which is tiny. It's tiny, tiny, tiny compared to like equivalent, you know, GPU packed data centers. I mean, you know, NVIDIA with Blackwell, they're getting there now. There are a couple, there are a few generations on from the A100, which was the latest, greatest thing when we first heard about Dojo, right? So, uh, and the world's not standing still, but Dojo can move forward too, and probably does.